Hello, I'm here to present uh, the autonomous engineer. She's trained to reduce risk, cost, and carbon in real estate development projects. That's what we need today, isn't it? So, um, to give you an example of an industry uh, that has moved from having humans doing the engineering to machines, this is a component from the automotive industry. In the real estate industry, we're all doing what we see on the left-hand side. So everything that is engineered in a, in a building like this is done by humans, or used to be. Um, and we're moving that industry towards that left-hand side. For this component, it, there is a reduction of 70% in material usage. The real estate industry uses 40% of all the material in the world. So I think we need to question ourselves, can we really allow humans to do the engineering going forward? We also have a situation where the high complexity of doing the engineering of a building is not something we easily solve with human brains. So we do stuff like this. For no apparent reason, we shift the air 180 degrees in these ducts, causing a pressure loss that is six times as much as if you have taken a 45 degree angle out to that diffuser instead, and then saving six, uh, six times as much energy. And you will also notice that that fire detector is probably the last one to detect a fire in that building. There are certain rules on the distance between fresh air and water uh, fire detector, but the high complexity in getting everything right uh, is, is too complex for humans. Everything is known, so it's a sweet spot for AI, and that's what we're utilizing in, in Consigli. So we'll call her the autonomous engineer because we're real estate first. We're engineers first, and then we use AI to solve explicit problems that we have when we do the engineering uh, of buildings and infrastructure. So I'm uh, going to give you some concrete examples to see how the machine can outperform human teams. This first one might look like it's very close to architecture. We, we're engineers. Architecture is a different education, different trade, different industry. But shuffling around standardized rooms, standardized apartments is pure mathematics. And I believe engineers are better at mathematics than architects. And this is a way to get more value out of your buildings. So in this case, for instance, it's a commercial building in Oslo. It's going to be turned down, and there's a hotel coming up. Hotels normally consist of standardized rooms, right? So we ask the machine to find a configuration that gives most value, most tiny Norwegian kroners per night for the owner. And in this case, the machine found 24 more rooms than the manual team was able to do. 24 more rooms in this hotel means 7 million US dollars extra worth of value for that developer. It's a major increase of value within hours. Another place uh, we, we, we see she performs really well is in all the technical systems. So if you had a geometry from the architect of a building, placing all the technical components in the ceiling grids, connecting it with ducts and, and pipes and cable trays is actually a huge puzzle of knowns. We know the laws of physics, we know the requirements, we know the regulations, but it's really, really complex. So again, perfect for AI, not so perfect for human groups like we do today. And, and as you will see here, this is a uh, real project in Norway where you normally use six to 12, sometimes 15 months with a large team to get the whole engineering in place. In this project, we spent two, two days because we had a, had a startup meeting with a customer. We put in all the algorithms, let them go, and we did a quality assessment and we delivered to the customer. So it took, it, in this case, from 12 months to two days to deliver the full ceiling grid ready for tender for this developer. That's a massive amount of savings for man hours. It's a massive amount of saving of, for um, money in that phase where you cannot have tenants into the, to your building and get income. And then we have another part of the engineering. Um, we have these plant rooms. In today's process, nobody is actually responsible for the size of this plant room. And it takes a lot of space that you could either sell, you could have, have tenants renting it, or you could avoid building it. So just taking mathematics from shipping industry, we are solving these plant rooms so they, everything fits there. It's situated so it's easy to operate. It's a good place for the operation maintenance staff to work. And then we can uh, have the right size of these plant rooms. 
we normally reduce these rooms with about 50 to 20 percent in, in, in space. And that is a lot of extra worth for the developer. And it's also a lot of uh, cost savings in operation and maintenance, because these rooms cost to operate and maintain as well. So what I've shown now is pure engineering tools. But of course, in, in, uh, an engineer uh, would normally also hand, handle a lot of documentation in this industry. It's a very documented focus. So we made some tools that can take out risk in huge packages of documentation as well. This was a very hard tool to explain to, to our customers before ChatGPT. A lot easier to explain this natural language processing uh, technology after ChatGPT came around. So, but we'll basically take the whole tender documentation package, add it in, make it into data, train the data models, and we'll look for risk. If we find risk, we tell the project manager where you have risk so you can fix it before sending it out for tendering. Normally, a package like that is hundreds of documents. In this case, it was 653 doc documents. Um, very fast for the machine to go in and look for risk discrepancies, references to outdated standards, everything that should be sorted out before sending it for tender to take down the risk and then the cost, of course, and less problem in the, in the development projects. We also do this with a handover documentation. So when you get a building, when you, if you're a um, developer and you get a building, you also get tons of documentation for that building. Everything is described and that is in PDFs. So, in the handover, we simply take all that documentation, make it into data, and we look, is everything there? Is something missing? Is it the right quality? Um, have they tried to written something so the warranty doesn't count? Everything. And we sort the documentation, prepare it for the O&M system, retrieve all the tasks that you need to set up for O&M system, so we make it ready for operation to, to, to take over that building. And then the funny thing again with the ChatGPT, we, we build on Microsoft Azure, so we had access to the tech the ChatGPT technology into our platform as well, because we sat there when it came around with already trained data models. So we just apply the technology and then allowing all our customers to talk to their buildings. Instead of ha having a graphical digital twin, we sometimes say we killed the, the digital twin in, in real estate, you now can talk to your documentation instead, and that's what actually operation and maintenance need to operate that building. So we were lucky, they came, came along a lot of AI tool that we could just utilize, although we were building a lot uh, beforehand. And, and, and I think that's a great value of having a tech company today. That there's so much technology being developed, so it get, gets easier and easier to take these really valuable tools out to uh, customers. A little bit about our business. Um, I founded the company in um, August 2020 in Oslo, in the middle of the pandemic. Um, we have now scaled, so we have more or less the whole private market in Norway. The only problem is that they don't develop that much, but luckily we also have the public market, uh, and they do develop. They build schools, hospitals, kindergartens, social housing, etc. so it's a good market for us. But as we saw the private market was going down, we hurried to UK, so we were able this year to land in the UK, expand in UK, and that's also where we have the first office outside of the Nordics. And then... Engineering of buildings is actually something you can scale globally because you have international standards, the vendors are global, so it's a good opportunity to, to build a tool that also scales globally, so that's what we're working at at the moment. In total, we have raised um, about 4 million US. We have uh, no VCs in at the moment. We just have industry investors and uh, Ingeborg and I still have control. Um, we, um, Expect revenue this year to land on about uh, 2 million US. Still quite small numbers, but last year we only have a little bit more than a half, so it's a, it's a good growth. Um, and uh, we, we will probably wait until Q1 2025 to, to raise the next round because we want the numbers to get higher and we see that we're close to getting bigger numbers. And that is um, because we are also going into uh, US, uh, we have landed in Japan. Since we made a slide deck, we landed in, in France. Uh, we're going into uh, the Middle East, and um, we plan to scale to the global market as quickly as we can. We have a high, highly diverse uh, team. We have 16 different nationalities sitting in Oslo, large team of people with PhDs in various uh, fields of, of AI and, and mathematics and physics. And uh, we are female-founded and led. 
So if you're interested in uh, talking to us any further, scan this QR code and reach out on LinkedIn. And uh, we're very happy to, to follow up. Thank you.